A theory from 1959 is still being studied and it is still relevant today, so let's dive in. Two-factor theory is more relevant to business or employment than Maslow's theory. If we remember Maslow's theory, uh, we most of us have been exposed to this at one point in time or another. Uh, we have the base of the pyramid. Those are our survival needs like eating and drinking. And as we move up the pyramid, uh, we, we get more to like the tribal needs fitting in uh, with others. And then moving up to the very top, self-actualizing, which would be reaching your calling or your potential. And an individual would move up and down this uh, pyramid as new needs emerge. If we take a look at the hierarchy of needs but apply it to work, it would look something like uh, a worker would have uh, certain pay and benefit needs. They need to be able to have a living wage, for example, and have safe working conditions where they're not worried about getting injured and so on. And then as those needs are met, the next need would be the need to get along with coworkers, the need to be respected, and then the need to advance in one's career. Now where Herzberg's theory differs from Maslow's is if we take a look at this pyramid on the left, let's act like it's broken up. So the bottom of the pyramid, these are called hygiene factors according to Herzberg. Uh, so Herzberg would say these hygiene factors, for example, supervision, relationships, salary, and so on, these have to be in place. So for example, you have to have good supervision, a competent supervisor. You have to have relationships that are not dysfunctional. You should have safe working conditions. The policy should be fair. Job security should be a priority of managers. The salary should be uh, relevant, if you will, or livable. Those things, if not there, if you're missing these things, if you're missing a good supervisor, uh, a supervisor that micromanages, for example, or you, you have uh, too low of a salary compared to competitors or so on, these things would lead to job dissatisfaction. If they're all there, though, it still would not motivate the worker. So the hygiene factors are like the base of a pyramid. They're like the survival needs. So no one gets excited to go to work because uh, their handbook is well written and has solid policies. But if you have poor policies or they're poorly administered, then you would be dissatisfied. Once this base of the foundation is sealed, if you will, then you can move up to the motivators. These are things like achievement, recognition usually is the top motivator, uh, the job itself, uh, the ability to grow as a person and in your career. These are how you motivate uh, workers according to Herzberg. So again, you can't really get to the top of the pyramid if the foundation is cracked. So again, the big difference here, this is the key takeaway, is that uh, just fulfilling all of the hygiene factors, the base, will not actually lead to motivation. So imagine you're looking at buying a house online, and you're probably looking at things like a mountain view or the yard or the kitchen. You're not going to be looking at, is the foundation solid? You, that should be a taken for granted, and that's how these hygiene factors work. These are things that you should take for granted at work. Uh, even if they're all there, it's not going to actually motivate uh, anyone. Um, and so that's kind of how uh, the two-factor hygiene factors work. So again, imagine you're buying a house. Everything is looks great, but then you get down and you see the foundation and it's crumbling and you're going to have uh, to fix leaks. It's probably going to break the sale. It's going to break the deal. That's kind of how the workplace is. These are... Uh, the, like these foundational elements need to be there, but they're not actually going to motivate. But the absence of, and this is the key with Herzberg's theory, the absence ofs will actually lead to dissatisfaction. If we take a look at the uh, second set of factors, the motivators, so imagine this house has a firm foundation. All the hygiene factors are, uh, are taken care of. So we've got good supervisors. We've got a uh, salary that's uh, respectable and so on then we can move up to these motivators the work itself the achievement the recognition and so on so again if a, a worker is not going to care about uh, advancement or growth if their salary is subpar or they have a dysfunctional work environment so uh, these work together 
And so, uh, but to actually motivate someone, the, again, the hygiene factors are, need to be taken care of, and then you can focus on these motivators. That's uh, Herzberg's theory. And there are studies out there, um, again, there, Herzberg's theory doesn't have 100% um, support in the studies, but it is still being studied today, and it's one of the most comprehensive of the mo job satisfaction or motivating theories. And just really quick, a shameless plug, I've just written this book, 2020, uh, release date, The Motivated Worker. I based this ex uh, solely on Herzberg's theory, and I applied it to modern-day workers, Millennial and Gen X. Um, and I've based it on a, a, an academic study that I did at a bank. Um, and so it's been double-blind, peer-reviewed. Uh, again, you can find this at McFarland Publishing. Thank you.